Overcoming five common myths that lead to disease and dysfunction. As I have mentioned in the introduction of this training, the traditional Western conception of medicine tends to focus on the physical and biochemical. While these two aspects of wellness account for a substantial portion of what a person feels and the overall quality of a person's health, they don't go quite far enough. In fact, traditional Western medicine has a very fragmented view of human wellness. This is why there are a significant amount of physical conditions in the United States and Western Europe that simply escape traditional diagnosis. Regardless of the kind of medication doctors throw at these conditions, they do not go away. A lot of this is due to the fact that people hang on to five common myths. These myths are not harmless. They position you to suffer from a wide range of diseases and dysfunction. These conditions may not be life-threatening, but they definitely put you a long way away from optimal health. Myth number one, all your different aspects are distinct from each other. This common myth assumes that your mind and your body are completely separate from each other. Now that Western medicine has come around to seeing the intersections between mood, psychiatric states, and physical states, there is still a lot to be desired. While it's commendable that Western medicine is now paying more attention to mood and mental states as far as overall wellness, they still think that there is a tremendous distinction within these aspects. Old habits die hard. Thankfully, we are beginning to make progress regarding how interconnected these aspects are. But by and large, these and other aspects like financial stress, spiritual states, and others are still viewed as completely and totally distinct. There's still quite a bit of progress to be made on this front. Unfortunately, the more people hang on to this idea, the more difficult it would be for them to achieve a sense of wholeness. Myth number two, most effective solutions have to come from outside of you. This is a very hard assumption to break from. Almost all Western medicine is built on this assumption. The thinking is, if the disease or dysfunction is within you, then the solution must come from the outside. It's all about intervention. It's all about some sort of chemical or outside force going from the external working its way to the internal. In other words, whatever ails you can only be taken care of if a solution is imposed on you from the outside. This is a serious problem because a lot of internal processes need to be lined up properly for external agents, chemicals, or triggers to produce the desired effect. You only need to look at the current research on the power of placebos to see how this works out. Believe it or not, a person's belief that medication will work plays a significant role on whether external biochemical compounds would have the desired effect. This is not a simple matter of just ingesting the right stuff from the outside. If things were only that simple, there is an internal component that has to be in place. Unfortunately, the more people believe in this myth, the harder it would be for them to open themselves up completely to therapeutic inputs, whether it comes from the inside or from the outside. Myth number three. You are completely a product of your external circumstances and other people. We live in a postmodern age. According to contemporary philosophy, which is often reflected in public policy as well as academic disciplines, human beings are essentially composites of external inputs and factors. In other words, if we were to change the external environment, people would have better lives. This thinking completely discounts the impact of internal choices and internal truths. Everything that constitutes a human being is essentially just a compilation of external inputs, which can be controlled. In other words, the solution to whatever frustrations you may have involve external circumstances as well as other people. Change those circumstances and people, and you will get better. Now, it's very easy to see what's wrong with this thinking. As I have mentioned earlier, it's hard enough changing yourself. Can you imagine trying to change other people? There are circumstances and people outside of your control. You may have some influence with these individuals, but ultimately, it's their call. Whether they're going to help you or not, if this help is going to have to take the form of them changing, that's definitely their call. Do you see how problematic this is? It's almost impossible. But unfortunately, this thinking that people are simply products of their external environment is just all too common. It is no surprise that too many people are sick and failing to live their lives to their fullest potential. How can they? They're dependent on external inputs and external changes that are simply not going to happen. Myth number four, spirituality only has a psychosomatic or placebo effect. According to this thinking, to the extent that spirituality has an effect on people, it is quite limited to psychosomatic or placebo effects. In other words, it's all in your head. This really does a big disservice to how crucial a sense of purpose and transcendence is to the human condition. It's no surprise that too many doctors, Wellness experts and lifestyle counselors are too quick to dismiss spirituality. If they were to incorporate it at all, they would incorporate it in passing. It tends to be treated in a very shallow manner. 
They fail to realize that people are looking for a sense of meaning. You can have all the money in the world. Other people might give you a tremendous amount of respect. But if you have nothing to live from, then what's the point? Sure, you have a lot to live for, but there's nothing to live from. There is no core spiritual reality that ties everything together and gives it meaning and a sense of transcendence. You don't necessarily have to be religious in the classical sense for this to make sense. Everybody has this need to answer the question, why? Unfortunately, hanging on this myth completely disregards this deep internal need. This has to be addressed. Otherwise, you're not going to be completely whole. There is something important that will remain missing. And unfortunately, the more you go on with that gap, the bigger it grows. It kind of scales up over time. And ultimately, when it comes to spirituality, it starts eating away at other parts of your life. You might think that you have your act together, but don't be surprised if, for some reason or another, something seems missing from your life. Myth number five, disease can only come from physical or biochemical sources. This myth really grows from the first and second myths. If our aspects are distinct from each other and solutions have to be imposed from outside, then it naturally follows that disease, dysfunction, or anything that affects wellness negatively must come from biochemical or physical sources. As I have mentioned earlier, there are significant numbers of people who get tested extensively and pass with flying colors who still express symptoms. They still feel sick. They still feel that something is missing. The simple reason is that they don't feel whole. Whoever their care provider is doesn't look at them as a whole person. Their health is sliced and diced to zero in on the physical, the external, and the readily apparent. There's a lot missing from the equation. This, of course, flows from the myth that disease can only come from physical or biochemical sources. This mindset doesn't address lifestyle. It doesn't address non-physical environments. It doesn't address states of mind that are not rooted in biochemical explanations. Hanging on to any of these myths can prevent you from benefiting fully from the information contained in this training. You need to put down this training at this point and ask yourself if you believe in any of the five myths I've laid out. If you haven't clearly examined yourself to see if you believe in any of these myths, the information I'm going to share is not going to have that much of an impact. It's going to take you a much longer time to benefit from this information, assuming you're able to benefit at all. Start with a clean slate. Make sure that you are completely clear and free of these myths because they will get in the way. The very least you can do is to approach the following information on holistic wellness with a completely open mind. Allow yourself to be a blank slate. You owe it to yourself. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.